Hello and welcome to the Red Zone Podcast, Episode 0, the Masterpiece Special. This is Elvin Dibuncho. And I'm Jero Lego. And today we'll be talking about everything that you need to know about the Masterpiece series from Magic the Gathering. Uh, this is going to be Episode 0. Our regular podcast will have more topics and more insight about us. But for now, we want to talk about the new Masterpiece series news that came out from Wizards of the Coast. All right, so so what are the Masterpiece series? So, so um, according to the website, from now on, um, all sets will have their specific Masterpiece series. And for Kaladesh, we're calling them Inventions. And let's start with Rarity. They're going to be coming out in a, in a, hierarchy, in a rarity higher than a Mythic Rare. Uh, to be specific, it's uh, one in every 144 booster packs. So that's actually one and a half masterpieces per case. Uh, a case is six booster uh, boxes, by the way. Also, they mentioned that that ratio could change in the future, but for now, that's what we're sticking with. It, it's actually more common than than the Zendikar expeditions because in, in Zendikar, you technically open one per case. I think it's one in 180 boosters. Now they made it one in 144 to make it exactly one and a half per booster case. But that actually doesn't mean that you automatically get one um, per booster case. So for those of you who will be opening those, you there's still a chance that you don't get any. And you can get, um, for, for Zendikar, for example, there were booster cases that um, had um, three in them. So that's also, that's also possible with this one, I believe. Now, and the Masterpiece series will be reprints of existing cards, uh, with one exception. Uh, there there will often be cards from the set included in the Masterpiece series, uh, like how the Battle of Zendikar had rare dual lands, which were included in the expansion set. But they will typically exist in the set in a traditional frame, in their normal rarity, in addition to appearing in the Masterpiece series. So for this cycle... Uh, there are five Mythic Rares that appear in the uh, set, in the Kaladesh set. There will never be any cards that appear in the Masterpiece set that can't be found outside of it. So that means um, if it's going to appear in the Cal- in a Masterpiece set, a series, it will appear somewhere else, uh, either at, in an old set or in the set that it's coming out of. Yeah, so, so basically it's a more expensive version of an existing card in Magic. Okay, and and they are also saying that the masterpiece series will also will always be tied thematically to the world they were they are appearing in. So for Kaladesh, for example, that's why we have inventions. And technically, if we consider the the expeditions to be part of that, that's also tied thematically because um, Zendikar is about the about the lands. So a number of masterpiece series cards uh, may fluctuate, but. Uh, they expect each masterpiece set to be around 50 cards for the whole block. Now, just a reminder, the new block is going to be one large set and one smaller set. So for uh, the current masterpiece series, uh, Kaladesh Inventions, there will there will be 30 cards in Kaladesh, then 24 cards in smaller set, either Revolt. So the large set, small set in the block will have different masterpiece cards. It's not going to be a reprint for each. Yep, also the Masterpiece series cards, same as the Expeditions, will um, all only be printed in English but will appear in non-English product. Meaning if you buy a Japanese booster box, for example, you could still get your Masterpieces but they will be in English. It's important to note that the Masterpiece series will, will exist only in premium foil versions. So all of them will be foil and they're going to be um, included for Magic Online but will not be redeemable. Or redeemable and are not counted as part of the set. Uh, they're going to be distributed in an exciting new way, but they're not really telling us how they're going to ex- uh, distribute that, but the promise is going to be exciting. So for those of you who are not familiar with Set Redemption and Magic Online, essentially if you get a copy of um, each of the cards in the set, you can um, convert them into physical copies of the cards. So what this is saying essentially is that you do not need to get um, one of the expeditions to, to claim the set and that you cannot um, convert your masterpieces and that you cannot connect, uh, convert your um, digital masterpieces to to your physical copy. Oh, and finally, if you open a masterpiece in, in a limited format, they are playable in that um, format. But um, like before, they're only playable in constructed in a format that they were already legal in. So 
based on uh, the lead designer, based on Wizards of the Coast website, um, they gave us some insight on why uh, they came up with the Masterpiece series. Uh, the story of this actually started back when um, they were bringing out the Zendikar ex- Expedition lands. And they saw that these lands were solving some challenges that they've been facing for years. Uh, namely, keeping the standard, uh, standard accessible, getting players access to older cards, and then giving players um, uh, alternatives for deck building. So let's expound on those three challenges. Um Keeping standard accessible. So, what does what exactly does that um, does that mean to you? Like, what do they mean by keeping it accessible? So the website says one thing, but why? What I think is that since you already have your masterpieces as your money cards in in each set, then um, what this does it it drives the pri- the um, the market prices down on on the other singles, which keeps standard accessible. Because um, since people are gunning for for the higher price cards, if you're trying to enter Magic and trying to buy your singles, you have um, you can get those singles now for for better prices. This this actually happened in in um, Zendikar and and Oath of the Gate Watch, where most of the rares um, were priced pretty fairly compared to to the other sets. Where, for example, in um, uh, in Shadows of Innistrad, uh, Abbas, you you had your Abbasins, which which started at like uh, forty dollars or fifty dollars. So yeah. In addition to lowering the price overall, a player can also just open one of these uh, masterpiece series from a pack and then sell or trade it for the components that he needs for his own deck. Uh, the second challenge um, of getting players access to older cards that's pretty straightforward for the masterpiece series, since these are largely reprinted versions of older cards with updated art and text um, that sort of solves that challenge immediately yeah well, um, well that's one thing the other thing that it does is that said older players who already have copies of the cards want to get the the this version with the more bling so what that does is it creates a market of players selling their old copies uh, at lower prices so th- that's where you get the new players um, finally getting to buy the cards they want for for cheaper than what it was running for. And speaking of bling, uh, we can um, the next challenge of providing alternatives for deck building. Um, bling is exactly the term used by wizards to denote these very uh, high aesthetic cards. You know, um, full bleed art, new border, improved um, foiling process is um, our card. These are frankly beautiful cards right uh the art on them is n- not something i haven't seen in magic ever i'm actually not sure if they they specifically like if they pay the artist more for these art i mean because they're obviously a cut above the rest of i mean your normal magic art so or we're not really we don't really have any info on on how that honestly works. the the art in kaladesh for at least for this set the kaladesh inventions have a have a painted quality to them um whereas in previous sets and for other cards actually there's there's a more functional cartoony version um but for this one it's very it's it's like almost a painting and i think that adds to that level of bling that a wizards is looking for and so if you were a player that had that old mana crypt from the from the novel that looked like a mine for some reason you can now upgrade it to the mana crypt that's in um in the Kalish invention set which looks like a an ivory tomb. Um, it's beautiful looking. So speaking of the art, um, let's look at the cards. Cataclysm Gear Hulk. Um, this one looks like the regular Gear, uh, Gear Hulk got gold plated and lost weight. So what um, Elvin's trying to say is that we don't really like it that much. But it's, I mean. The the art itself not as much, but yeah, the, I think that's the border, more just a stylistic thing. Yeah, I mean, you might like it. We respect that. Yeah, people have their tastes. 
Yep. Um, let's go to the next one. Torrential Gear Hulk, which is a guy with a, a two-headed uh, with fountain with the hose. Super Soaker. Uh, with, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, compared to the Cataclysm <laughs> Gear Hulk, this one I like better because there's a clear line. Um, it looks like a robot. The other one looks like somebody painted so a bunch of of wires cut together. This one looks like a robot. A, a robot that has water coming out of it, but it does look like a robot. I Yeah, I mean... Oh, by the way, this card is going to be named um, Fat Caster Mage from now on. Um, that's what... Uh, people on YouTube started calling it because of the Snapcaster Mage of it and it being fat. Well, top heavy, I think, would be better. It's like that's a very thin, um, thin waist and little uh, loincloth for. Yeah, I mean that. That was I was I was gonna talk about that. Why? Why is a robot wearing a loincloth? And because he is civilized. Uh, so the next one would be the Noxious Gear Hulk. This one, although it does share. A, it looks like it shares artist with the uh, with the f- uh, Cataclysm Gear Hulk. Does it? Does it share? No, it doesn't. It it looks because it looks very similar. It's indistinct, but this one actually works for the Noxious Gear Hulk. It has like a smoky feeling to it, like something rotten, something decaying, and and that works for it. Yeah, and 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 remember how the Gear Hulks sort of have this this theme where it's gold with the. Uh, turquoise colored uh, gem like things in it so this guy still has those gem like things in them but the, the but of like the a gold, darker hue it's like, yeah no no like, like the gold is it's not corroded but it's like tarnished right? almost like uh, it, it's been drained of some sort yeah yeah and it has a huge um, scythe scythe like yeah, it's no really I think really it's cool. sword that it's just curved. It's very curved. That's too curved for a sword. I think that's more of a scythe. Eh. But any which way, it's a cool-looking weapon, a yeah. cooling hand weapon. So this one we do like. So moving on, now we have Combustible Gear Hulk, which is a... a oh, yeah, honestly, what it is reminds it? me of an Ava. <laughs> if you know the old um, anime, um, a Neon Genesis well, Evangelion, yeah, really? looks like an Eva. Uh, Eva um, because it's like next to a wall, well, at any and there's like a bunch of quote unquote pilots in front of it, I guess. And the fact oh, yeah, that now, it's like now, a hand, now I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, I, I, glowing, it's like a or a Gundam actually, yeah, yeah, which yeah. makes this actually one of the better looking Gear Hulks because nice shoulders. Honestly, now that I'm looking at it again, it reminds me of Gypsy Danger. Yeah, well, you you basically just mentioned uh, like all the Robomech. The movies that came out in the last, yeah, okay, I'm, uh, yeah. But look, it's the same thing with the, with the electric hand, except it's like red instead of blue. But you have like Gypsy Danger, like the big chest, l- over uh, exaggerated shoulders, a uh, sol- uh, shoulders, tiny head. Uh, I guess um, this one, um, me though, I don't like it that much because, uh, like, imagine it in a normal magic frame; it looks normal. Okay, it's 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 a stock um, robot thing. But yeah, right. I like the like the glowing red hand. Okay. Next, we have the Verdurus Gear Hulk. This one is a little bit odd looking, cause essentially looks like a tree. Yeah, is it made tree of wood. that? You mean it's a robot made of wood? Yeah. Well, I guess. Um, which is I, I think, think which is what it is, right? I think so. It, that's actually part of the th- the theme. Um, of this set, I, if I recall, and that one of the one of the designers mentioned that this set is showing how um, technology isn't in contrast or isn't in doesn't run counter to um, to nature. To nature, yeah, it's it, hmm. it enhances okay. nature. So, um, unlike in older sets where technology is like the bane of green or the bane of 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 natural uh magics uh technology is like a is facilitated by green magic so you can have like um you know mechs that are made from natural uh, materials for natural magic okay right that makes sense uh if yeah does it give you like an elephant like vibe no it actually it was actually giving me a minotaur like vibe. yeah yeah it's like the tusks or horns yeah 
Okay, so all of those gear hulks are about um, forty dollars of pre-order and and numerous websites. So those are actually the worst things you could, uh, or the the worst masterpieces you could open value-wise. Okay, so next we go to one of the nicer ones, um, price-wise and art-wise for me at least. It's Aether Vial. The art, though it's great, I don't like because where is the vial? Uh, I guess it's. I can see either. Where's the vial? Great art. It just doesn't connect. It's kind of like, you know, winter orb. You see the orb, sure, but then you're focused on the, the polar bears. You know, it's like, here, it's worse. You have the either. Where's the vial? I guess that could be a vial, but... Yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure that out. I mean, it, it could be an upside-down vial, right? So anyway, yeah, um, Aether Vial, a staple in modern, so that thing's, uh, this thing's worth like $120 at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's, but, but it is good. The art is real nice, but I can't find the vial. If you if you guys can see the vial, please comment below. Yep, yeah. Tell us about where, where yeah, you can, yeah, tell us where the vial is. All right, next one. Okay, so next one would be Champion's Helm. Uh, this came from uh, Commander Set. And um, it looks okay. It's a bit cone heady, but yeah, I guess. I mean, well, this is uh, again one of the more um, cheaper cards that you you could get as a masterpiece. Um, but it might get value because we do have um, commander um, players or EDH players wanting this card. So yep, a little more, a bit, a little bit more valuable than the gear folks. All right, and next is the Chromatic Lantern, where if you're if you don't play Cube or EDH, it's one of the staples. Um, it's currently priced at uh, around fifty dollars, but it is sold out everywhere for pre-order. Because um, let's face it, every Cube is gonna want this. It, uh, I think uh, most EDH decks also want this. I mean, a lot of people are gonna want it. It's not a very expensive card to start with, but. Um, you know, for everyone who wants to have that b bling um, cube or EDH deck, uh, yep, they're gonna want this. And the the art yeah. though, it's uh, I guess it's uh, a lantern that has the five mana colors in it. Yeah, but um, it's like an Oriental lantern. It's better than the original art though, right? I mean, people will want this card so that they could upgrade their their decks with the more blingier version so well the original one looks very similar except that it was like a lantern it had the colors except it had yellow this one's a little bit more clearer that oh, okay that's that's white that's red that's green that's black i think this also kind of has it still has yellow but I mean, but yeah, I, I like it a bit more than the original. Um, compared to the other masterpieces, though, uh, it's so-so, right? Yep. All right, so the next one, Chrome Mox. <sighs> the art is pretty. But I guess that black thing is, I guess it's Chrome. I guess this would look much better if I saw it um, IRL because the Chrome, quote-unquote, the Chrome effect is lost on this. No, I think it's because it's black chrome, right? No, no. It, well, I think the black is to is it show like a, like a yeah, yeah, exactly, thing? like a shadow uh, reflection thing. Yeah. So this white thing at the bottom is actual the actual that white dot is like the chrome shine. So if you have the actual card, since it's foiled, the black will actually sh be slightly reflective, kind of like when you have a a shadow in the chrome. At least that's what I think. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, I, I like the... What is it, though? Like, the, the, the mox is in. Looks like some sort of choker. Yeah, I, I, I thought that at first, but then I realized that it's not on a person. Well, it could Cause, be. Because, you know, cause you, you look, look at the lower part of the card, because it is a full bleed card with the, 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 uh, the text over it. it. It's like it's on a... Like a staff of some sort? Yeah, yeah. Because that's a hand, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, as we all know, um, Chrome Mox is banned in Modern, which gives it slightly less value than what it's supposed to get. Um, no, no at least is... it, it, it looks better than the original art of the Chrome Mox, if you recall. The one that looked like a tick. A what? It looked like a tick. A tick? 
like the insect, the really? one that sucks blood. Uh, now imagine yeah, that I big guess, thing as red. Now it's thick. Yeah, the I original guess, uh, Chrome Ox looked like an insect. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's be- it's indeed better than the original one. Yes, eh? a lot better than the. I-, I actually like it. This one, yeah, yes. Um, it's just I-, I think that the black thing was too much. If they made that a little bit smaller, they think they would have got the same effect. But I'm not an artist, so who ge- uh, who knows? All right, next one would be Cloudstone Curio, the one that totally does not make sense to me. I mean. To be part of this set, but from, from a card, just from a power perspective, I mean, from a usability perspective, I guess. I mean, from a general perspective, I mean, because because the gear holes, they they are part. Of, I mean, they're not particularly good cards as masterpieces, but they are part of the set, so it makes sense that they're here. Um, this one though, I mean, it's good art and all. I mean, this Noah Bradley cloud in the yeah, it's, a, it's actually thing. fair. Well, it's an egg. It's it actually evokes a. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the the art is good. I like it, but the card. Why is it in the set? It's true. Um, but as you said, the art's lovely. Um, it evokes one of those um Russian eggs. And though it actually is worth um a bit more than the gear hulks at the moment, um, because I guess it's it's still a bit more useful than those those five. But you know, I mean, it just doesn't. Seem like it fits to me at least, but yeah, it is some sort of an it is an artifact, like it is a an invention, right? So, so yeah, um, now you have the Crucible of Worlds. Uh, for me, this um looks great. This is like uh, just the art, the the one that you know, understanding what the Crucible is, is this is really nice. Um, uh, Crucible being a a vessel in which you heat something up to high high temperatures, so it's kind of that's like exactly what the crucible is. Yeah, and you could actually see how how hot the uh, the liquids are that they're glowing blue and everything. Yeah, but right. if you're talking about the worlds, that's a world. It's melting a world. That's it's like a oh well, but based on the flavor text, you know, it's liquid either. Anyway, a great um, okay card, but great art. No, it's not an okay card. It's actually a great card. I mean, it, well, it is vintage playable. It, yeah, I mean, uh, when and what I mean with that is a lot of the decks want it, a lot of EDH, your EDH and um, cubes want it. So it's worth a lot of money. The art is great. Uh, that's one of the things you, you want to be opening when you when you get uh, your masterpiece. And next one, we have Gauntlet of Power. Um, this is one of the cards that I recently, when I, when I started playing Magic again, um, this is one of the cards that was worth nothing when I quit and was worth like 12 or so dollars when I come back. I was a bit surprised. I wasn't really aware of, of how EDH worked that, that time. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about, uh, this card. Uh, so it's a gauntlet that does show power. Yeah, it's very similar to the Infinity Gauntlet. It looks like that, or um, uh, that guy from from Why are you Overwatch. Say incredible. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's uh, there's a um, in Overwatch. There's a gauntlet that they have in in the first um, animated short. That it sort of looks like that, uh, but I believe Gauntlet of Power is based of Gauntlet of Might, the original card from Alpha Beta Unlimited which was uh, I believe 4 mana or 5 mana um, all red creatures get plus 1 plus 1 and all mountains produce additional uh, red mana and uh, when they brought out a Gauntlet of Power which is like a upgraded version with new uh, which allows you to choose the color that was affected um, sort of like a callback to that as well yep and and yeah, once again, really great art. And also in theme with everything else, right? Yep. Golden, blue, and... Invention. Yep. Kind of like straight out of uh, Tony Stark's armory. Yeah, it looks... It does. It could be like medieval Iron Man's gauntlet. But yeah. Next you have the Hanger Back Walker. The walker with a hanger on its back. So this actually looks very, very similar to the original art. Like, it's it just became more... Festive? Okay, festive, yeah, exactly the word I was gonna say, but I was looking for like another, like a better word. But yeah, I think that's it. Like, there is it. Like, are they 
like celebrating underneath it? Yeah, I think it's like um because Kaldesh is like the great inventor's fair. So as you know, make way for hanger back walker. Yeah. And Say hey, it's hanger back walker. It even looks like they have the globe on the lower right. The inventor's globe thing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, it that? could be. Uh, <laughs> it's it's like another like um, the that, world's fair. That actually thing. reminds me of like older cards. Like older cards usually had like other cards in them. So if you look at say you know um, I can't recall that card up like um, yeah, yeah there would be yeah. an etog in it so this one could that could be another card that's there which which I think it's nice you know there's like interactions you can see that it's part of a larger world so now going to the next card lightning greaves another staple in your cubes and EDH decks I think we're slowly getting Iron Man we got the glove now we have the greaves. Soon we'll have the armor, and then we can we can form Iron Man. Oh yeah, actually, I mean, since since this is like inventions and stuff, I, w- I won't be surprised if we have something like like armors and like Tony of Stark. Oh, we we also have the helm. Yeah, yeah. So so we can actually almost form Iron Man. Oh, if you can, and you, you have like a Chrome the, Box as a you power. Can, you can use the combustible Gear Hulk's body because I was gonna say it looked like one of those um, uh, the knight armors that you put. In castles on display, this is was next to the wall doing nothing. So yeah, lightning Games currently at um fifty dollars. It is sold out though, cause yeah, a lot of decks will be. I mean, a lot of people will be wanting it. Yeah, this is a little bit of blast from my past. Uh, the Lotus Petal. Um, remember this back in um the the Weatherlight cycle, I think. Um, Tempest or Stronghold. Um, anyway, the Lotus yeah, Petal. Old yeah, Lotus Petal. There, um, I do. N- I appreciate the f- intricate design for the petal. I do not appreciate the fact that it seems to be just a cropped picture of an actual lotus. I wish that, just like the original lotus petal, it's a petal on its own. You know, just the pe- petal on its own, so valuable. You know, we can see a petal, but here it's just. Oh, okay. We have this beautiful lotus. We'll just cut off the part. I will crop it. Yeah, I did appreciate that. You know what would be cool though, if like if they if you somehow if you zoom that out and it was a black lotus, it was gonna be a card eventually. In one of the later sets, yeah. perhaps maybe for well, um, yeah. either what else no, the like, set? It's actually in the reserve list, so that's not gonna happen anytime that's soon. That's true. But um, me on the other hand, I do like the art. It's very it it, it reminds me of what you like what you see in in um, those some um, high end watches. It looks like something that comes out of a Patek Philippe. Um, like it's a commercial. clockwork mechanism. It's like yeah, very right. intricate <laughs> and very nice. That's also currently sold out for a hundred dollars in pre-orders everywhere. So if you want that, you'd probably end up spending up a little bit more. Um, next is uh, what we we already talked about this earlier a bit is Mana Crypt, which is your money card for the set. Yeah, just lovely, lovely art. Um, you see the columns. Uh, evoking like a Roman mausoleum and in you know the intricate um, sort of door and it's, it's all in all it's just a lovely piece of art um, if you look at it carefully you'll see that it's art and the design on the columns the frames. also bleed out into the frame and yeah, into beyond it yeah. yeah that's what I like about it most like it's uh, like the frame is part of it um, you know what I don't like about it though is like, why they had to go with white i mean it's golden white it's or ivory but i mean they, well it's they, marble actually because you know if you're gonna have a crypt marble is kind of like what you put in a tomb uh, all right i guess the that gold that I, I i understand where you're coming from it's a little bit plain uh, but i think the gold really accents it quite well no no, no. I, I think the golden and uh, the marble work but i kind of wanted it to stay in theme it could have been gold and like the aether the aether colors right it's so no the, the 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 either colors of blue served or, like or a really green. really gr- really nice highlight but i guess a gray maybe a silver maybe a silvery gray but i think um all in all the choices made by the artist is quite good yeah and um this thing's currently sold out at 200 dollars. so and the next one is also the other money card the, the other 200 dollar card yeah uh, that would be mon- the mana vault I do recall the old mana vault, which was like a like a living flesh thing. Yeah, it was like a brain 
Yeah, yeah, hanging right. in a cave it's like really creepy the, this one is more vaultish uh, it reminds me of Scrooge McDuck it's a little um, vault it's not just vault-ish it's an actual vault with like, actual things that probably produce mana but, but with how it's glowing you even have like um, a fence to protect it I mean it's literally mana vault I like it well technically it's like mana safe Oh, so there's, well, like, there's like a little dial at the center, or am I, I'm not sure that's a stone or something. But yeah, it's it's no, it I mean it's it's though. it's a vault because because those are like fences to the side of it. So I understand why you think that it's a small thing, but it's probably something that's huge, right? Yeah, I, I understand that. It just looks like it's huge. It's a safe for giants. Okay, giant mana safe. Okay. I can do with that. All right, we go to the next card, which is Mind's Eye. This one though has the, I believe this is the. The new planeswalker, right? Uh, or, or legendary. I, I'm trying to recall exactly what he did. But yeah, I, I remember like a new blue skin character. I think these are the Aetherborn, the ones that uh, have no gender. Yeah, and I, I also forget the forget the name of the, the planeswalker. But um, even if I remember, I'm actually not sure if this is him or just one of those um, Aetherborn. Um, I think it's like Divan, Divin. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And yeah, I mean, the, the art, though, it makes sense because um, it's supposed to be something that allows you to see with the visionary's eye according to the flavor text. And so it, it looks like someone with some sort of device that, like a like a virtual reality device, sort of, right? But yeah, I mean, the colors look great. The character looks great. The card looks great. I mean, the card itself is not that great, but it does look great. So that's the point of the masterpieces. So yeah. Do you think we'd ever have like planeswalkers as masterpieces? I'm I'm almost about a hundred percent sure that we will one day. Cause look, look at just just look at that um like that cat that creature. You know, it 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 seems that it's really fit like a higher quality type of art, higher quality. Um, layout, you know, all of this um, improved um, foiling, all of that would fit like a character really, really well. Yeah. Um, I mean, so far, and, we have gear hooks. Yeah, because because we are gonna have, I mean, different themes for this. This is according to the announcement. The, these are gonna be going on like forever until they change their minds. So they're eventually gonna be gonna pick the planeswalker team. And when that happens, I'm sure we're gonna be talking about Tybalt and how he's the crap rare. The, the crap part of the set but anyway yeah next one would uh, next a card in the set would be the mox opal and this one it looks really really good um uh to be honest this is like my favorite art in the, in the entire masterpiece series um the opal looks like an opal uh, it looks um you know the rainbow i can just imagine what it looks like foiled and then the the mechanism there, like this intricate, beautiful, gilded mechanism that you can just see draws power out of that um, opal. So it's it's beautiful. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I understand what you're coming from and how the, you know, the whole art just works theme-wise. Um, I don't like the art that much, though. I mean... Is an opal that really that color? Isn't this the well? O opals are known for their like rainbow hue. Um, there are certain certain types of opals that are darker, like um, Australian fire opals, which are black. But all opals have that sort of uh, rainbow effect through them. So this one is really really nice. Okay, I guess it's uh, glowing then. That's why it's like because the old one is a lot darker, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, as you probably already expect, this being an, an, a staple in Affinity decks everywhere, everyone's going to want this. It's going to be expensive. Um, Pre-order prices would be at like um, $180 at the moment. Uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, if you're an Affinity player looking for some bling, you definitely want this. Because uh, let's face it, you were expecting a Ravager reprint, which you didn't get. Um, you'd have to settle up for this right now. All right, moving to the next card, which is Painter Servant. Um, not too great of a card. I guess it's used in combo deck somewhere. But the art, though, is like, to to me at least, this is silly, ridiculously good art. It's a the the Painter Servant with like like um this festive colors coming out of its hands. I think just 
painting everything. Uh-huh. Well, if you look at it, it's actually it's like tendrils have paint flowing through them. So it's kind of like a stylus. So like you have little um, tubes circling around mm-hmm. its arm, ending at the point where it's like a needle or maybe a, like a paint sprayer and then inside its arm like the hollow tubing inside its arm flows this rich paint so it's like the uh, scarecrow tattoo artist sort of maybe yeah no but yeah i mean i just like the how the colors are are, are certain hi- are highlights of certain things they the the, the painter servant even colored one of those doves yeah i guess that makes sense he's like the Scarecrow hairstylist or something. Okay, next would be the rings of Bright Heart, Bright Hearth. So for what it is, it does what it needs to do. It's a pair of rings. Hearth would be a fireplace. So uh, to me, this is like the the least special card. I mean, special looking art in the set, or one of them at least. Also, not a very expensive or good card. So this is one of the meh cards in the set, right? Yeah. Uh, art doesn't impress either. All right, so let's move on. Um, next, we have scroll rack, which it is a rack with scrolls, I guess, but also not not very very impressive to me. I remember back in the day when the scroll rack was like really, really highly sought after. Nowadays, uh, there are better cards than the effects, but um, no, but, but it still is for for Cuban EDH. So yeah, me, I mean, people will be wanting this card. It's not one of the most expensive cards in the set, but people will be wanting it still. The art here, though, is a little bit confusing. Um, there isn't really a rack, more of a mechanism, like a centrifuge, actually. Well, it's not a rack in the traditional sense where it's um, like laid out horizontally, but it is like a circular rack. I mean, it's still a rack. It's like a coat rack with scrolls, right? Uh, coat hanger, a uh, right? Nah. <laughs> if you look at the original scroll rack, it has containers for scrolls. This one, yeah, containers for scroll, but it's not. It looks unusual. But then you know, these are inventions and mad scientists have very strange needs and maybe this fits the particular inventor's need and as um in any case it does make you think when you're looking at it so i guess that is what you want to do when you're making artwork yeah i just i just don't like it because it, even the scrolls are the same color as everything else it, and, and it just note this blends. is just uh, yeah the, just note th- th- this is just it's an opinion of people who aren't necessarily artists of uh, visual artists but you know you would have um you can have your own interpretation yeah, you, you can yeah. like it if you want yeah and we won't we, judge you no, yeah we won't judge you you can judge us that's yeah, okay it's fine that's all right, right. Moving on. next one would be sculpting sculpting steel this one does look nice for me um i am also a fan of carnage uh from oh, yeah, the this marvel is, this is like a symbiote thing <laughs> yeah it looks yeah, like yeah. so much like a symbiote uh oh, I, like, yeah, I say I carnage like. because it's thinner it doesn't have like the bulky thing that venom would have but yeah sculpting steel uh looks pretty nice um looks like uh there's like a uh like a velvet background like this was just being unveiled for the um, for the fair or something yeah it could be it could just or it could just be like curtains or something right i mean i don't know um yeah but all in all it uh it looks it looks very nice and uh, yeah it's it's making a copy uh oh it's a a a kinetic sculptor i mean it's a um skin it's a kinetic sculpt apparently yeah it's 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 hey, look, cause the, look at the uh, the 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 flavor text. Uh, they are self-assembling metal strands. That Essentially, can be this into is any shape the imaginable. this the enemy in Big Hero in Big Hero Six. No, no, come on, Terminator. I guess a T one thousand. Yeah. yeah, but if it's being directed by somebody, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's sculpted steel. All right, next we have something like a card that everybody knows about, Soul Ring. So I guess this one's the, the card that would be a, a bit misleading because you think cause Soul Ring has dropped price very, uh, very much uh, during the recent reprint. But um, this one, though, is going to be it's still going to be worth a lot because if you want your Soul Ring bling, this is going to be it. And you know, as you know, Soul Ring played in vintage um, in everyone's cube, in everyone's EDH deck. 
uh, this is worth like $150 at the moment. I'm only thinking this is not so much a soul ring as it's a soul ring. It, it actually looks like a like a wedding ring to me. But soul yeah, ring. <laughs> Before he had a soul ring, which is like like a ring of fire, a ring of the sun. Now you have a soul ring. It's a ring of sunlight. No, because 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 I think it's a it's worn by a it's a girl's ring this time. Yeah, I guess. Like and and you know how because I noticed um, uh, Kaladesh has this like yeah it's inventions it's it's it's, uh, it's festive it it sort of has an Indian theme to me. Ah uh, yes yes I think that was was it was uh, the designer designer somewhere? did mention that it they are it, um, making this very Indian themed. All right, good good job designer. You've successfully done that. And this one it gets the team head uh, head on. It looks like one of those uh, Mindy tattoos, right? The the henna things. And yeah, very Indian looking thing, right? Okay, next you have the solemn simulacrum. Sad Iron Man. No, this is Ultron. Oh yeah, sorry, I, I, my mistake. A sad Ultron. Yeah, so I mean, although this this thing like looks very sad and like like, like the opposite of everything else in the set, I still like it because it's it's solemn. And yeah, it's it's essentially um, the art itself is a little bit darker. I wish there would be more highlights, similar to what um, you mentioned before. About like putting some of those uh, blue highlights, I think this could have helped. This could have added a little bit more blue highlights to differentiate the shadow from the dark armor. But uh, all in all, this still looks nice. All right, next is Static Orb, which is an orb with like surrounded by static electricity. So I think they hit that nail head on, right? I don't think that's static electricity. I think that just sort of represents time stopping or slowing down. Like, um, it slows everything down around it so that even the rays of light sort of blur because it can't move as fast as it wants to. That is what static orb does. It stops time. But... But either way, it's like it's head on, right? Yeah, it it, it does it does seem to ca- to um, to work really well. It, it's it's a very nice looking card. And and, and again with the, and again with the frame, it sort of has those things in the side. I guess that those are like col- columns with water. It looks like columns on the side. Yeah, yeah but uh, I don't think that's water. As I said, I think it's like light. The simulation of light being blurred by the or warped uh, by the effect of the orb. Anyway, it has those things that that blend into the frame. Uh, they're they're a bit the the color is a bit different, but still, it it just uh, combines with it really well. Um, it seems to stand. It has to have, it has a stand of its own. Yeah, uh, yeah. Although the card's not that um, expensive, but yeah, fifty dollars at the moment. Next, we have a steel overseer. Um, Iron Moses, let my metal people go. Oh, and I think that's Hanger Back Walker in the back. Uh, yeah, so hanger back walker in the back. <laughs> yeah, it it's very nice. And once again, uh, we mentioned I mentioned earlier for Han- hanger back walker. I enjoy cards which reference other cards in them. So this one is really really nice because you can see that there is there is a hanger back walker there, and it's like look look at this representation of of the flesh people's uh, repression of the metal people. Maybe so are the are the human sheep. To the robot. No, the uh, the humans are the humans are like the Egyptians, and the the artifact constructs are are like the Jews. And the uh, hanger back walker is the pyramid, maybe, because they're being built by they're made up of smaller Jews, you know, so they're dying to make that. Ah, the the co- uh, comparison might break down, but. All in all, still a great looking card and you know, very biblical. Okay. And um, Steel Overseer, as everyone knows, an affinity staple. Um, it's worth surprisingly just $70 at the moment. I suggest you affinity people um, order because I think um, prices are going to be a bit higher for this one. Okay. And now let's get to um, my favorite cards in the set, um, art wise. Um, the first one Sword of Feast and Famine. Um, a card that shows a 
sword that was already in famine and um, with vegetation. Yeah, um, I can't find the feast. I see the famine. Um, it's just that you know, overgrown plants don't really say feast to me. So maybe if you know, um, you, you said it before. You know, if there were like grapes on it or some some yeah, cause, fruit cause, or cause, some cause sort I of. I think the artist kind of wanted to put like fruit in that. It 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 really looks like Stephen here wanted to go like, do I do I do I go all out and put grapes in this thing? Yeah, but but, but Nana, he didn't put, want put to put something there. Put, no, because a feast. What is a feast? We a feast we, is... we had we had enough banana jokes with Tazagray. I think. Well. Any sort of fruit, and, and or you any know what? Sort of feast. No, but you know what? With the purple uh, curtains in the background, I really think he considered putting grapes there at one point. Yeah, well, I, I see the famine. I want to see the feast. But but good, yeah, good but I need I need to hear someone say yes, right? The art is considered putting grapes there at one point, right? Per, I I hope that he considered putting grapes, because <laughs> it makes more sense than freaking leaves. Uh, but either way, I. I don't feast on leaves. I'm 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 an omnivore. Well, well anyway, if this it's you the, put a turkey leg on the end of that sword, that would be better. Imagine feast and famine. You have like a broken sword, and that then at the end, a turkey leg. You hold on to that turkey leg. That's a feast, feast and famine. That's gonna be not. The, that's gonna look silly though. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure Stephen can do well and make that like. Awesome kick-ass turkey leg. Maybe he can do that so next time he, he does an appearance at a convention or something. Pig on it. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, a sp- pig on a spit. Yeah, there's like a pig head there. Um, no, I, or some sort of feast. I don't. Uh, know. I don't. I, I still. Think I, I, this I thing can't is awesome find the feast. I mean, I, I like. The it looks good. Thing, it looks thing, good. Right? I just can't see the feast. They could have called if it, if it were sort of. Um, Sword Vegetation of fam- and famine, then it would work it, for you. Okay. It's a sort of that. overgrowth and famine. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Okay, the next one would be the sword of ice. I mean, a sword of fire and ice. And so we can see here that there is a bastard and a prince. Uh, no, sorry. Wrong. wrong uh, I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, so the sword here has like a... A noisy cricket vibe that I'm getting. If anybody, if there are any MIB fans that out actually, there, that actually the the thing on the upper right part I see. Yeah, it but. looks like a noisy cricket. You like hold it in your hand and you like stab it, ha. Huh? Uh, but yeah, I like the mixture of the the sort of burning steel. I like the mixture of the burning steel and the ice represented by like those little diamonds. So, uh. Yeah, pretty art. I don't see how it's a functional blade, but pretty art. Yeah, this one, yeah, same uh, as I said, the the swords are my favorite in the set. But th- this one, uh, this one is my least favorite though because I really don't see where the freaking sword is. Maybe it's a dagger of fire and ice. You think it's not. It's a sword of fire and ice. Yeah, I, a really big handle. W- w- where is the handle? I don't even get it. Think gun blade? Where? There, like you put your finger in the hole. <sighs> like it's upside down? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's go to the wait, next one. Wait, wait, but look at that thing underneath the... Isn't that like a gauntlet No, that's No, the, that's the thing that's... Pa- it's just a thing that's that's on top of it. I, I don't think so. It's It's... I, who's I, I, who's I the artist I don't, of I don't this? See the sword. It, it, I, I think that says Yolkan Baga. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll we'll understand better. Once may, maybe Yolkan is watching this. Yeah, tell if, us how if, you, if you use are, your sword. Please, please comment and tell, tell us how to use your how, sword of fire and ice. How this is a sword. We're not trying to disrespect you. We just don't get. We're we just, just maybe, want to know. We're just stupid and don't <laughs> get why it's a yeah, sword. Yeah, share with us. Maybe maybe you have used the sword similar. Show us, please. Oh, are you familiar with Indian weapons, though? There might be something that's similar to this. I I, I tried looking for um, Indian weapons. This is not an Indian weapon. Um, in fact, the only the closest thing to an Indian weapon would be the Sword of um, Feast and Famine. All right. Go b- back to Feast and Famine. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to the last one. Um, last card of the set. It's, a, it's the Sword of Light and Shadow. Uh, this sword is actually very nice. Uh, uh, you can see that it is like a rapier, but 
um, the way yeah, that wait that's isn't it a gladius? I don't know because it it looks like a gladius, but it's too long. And the we pommel we don't is... have perspective on long. I think it's a gladius. I, the, the way the the way the the blade widens at the bottom, I think it's a gladius. Well, in any case, this the the mixture of light and shadow, or how it's being uh, represented here, is really nice. I like the fact that well, you know you can see that the blade is smoky and you know a little bit indistinct. You see those like those little smoke things yeah. coming up. No, and and, and, the, and the thing with the shadow thing is like you can see like they emphasized shadow by making the thing really really bright. Like the the underside is glowing, but the top side, even with all the bright things, is still black light absorbing shadow honestly the first time i saw it i thought it was like a missile of some sort but yeah it uh, looks <laughs> very much like a sword yeah i mean if you're using one of the swords in one of your edh or cube decks i mean you'd want this in it like let's face it you're you're gonna if you have bling on on those decks you'd spend a hundred dollars for these things right uh, i think they're like worth 120 250 each at the moment all right, so those were the cards. Um, now I just want to briefly discuss how I think these cards will affect the uh, the game, the meta game. But um, first, with standard, of course, they will not affect the standard meta at all because these are um, either cards that are not in standard or cards that are in the set. So nothing much there. And modern uh, and the older formats, though, um, like what they said, they wanted to make. Um, cards available so if if there were cards that you that you couldn't get um now is your chance to get them i'm i'm pretty sure at the later sets they will also be printing more of the cards that you you couldn't get um uh, like the, the, the one of the, the the rarer cards like um maybe next set there will be a candelabra or something right i mean we wouldn't know but um one of the one of the formats that this impacts that I kind of don't like though is it's impact and limited which is strange because what's one of the um things that you'd want to do with a new set you know um uh, make uh, one of the th challenges that uh, wizards had is making sure that uh players can play that but for limited how exactly do you think these cards would affect that so for limited let's face it it's not gonna uh, affect it that often because that's one in one in one hundred and forty four packs that you get one. So, if you run your standard um, draft tournaments with eight players, this is, you'll see one um, one masterpiece in every six spots. But when it does affect it, you get a sword of fire and ice in your draft deck. You win, right? That's true. Cause, cause these they, these things are colorless. They go in any decks. I mean, some of them are quite useless. Like you get the cloudstone, then you, you still pick it because you want your fifty dollars. But it's not gonna help you. But but the rest, like you get your sword of um, fire and ice. Um, what else? Or, well, not everything actually. Um, cause your um, the solemn will will help you, but it's not gonna be game winning. But like, look at this: the swords, your soul ring. Your scroll rack, your mox opal, uh, mana vault even, right? Uh, mana crypt, lotus petal. Those are gonna give you a, an unfair advantage. I mean, they could be comparable to what um, other rares um, will be doing, but it can be broken sometimes. Like specifically the swords. I I mean, I'm not sure what the the limited meta is is gonna be because the the full spoiler isn't out yet but i'm pretty sure the swords are gonna when they do when you do open them they're gonna just break the meta yeah i agree and uh, and for that i don't like them but again like we said that's gonna be one in every six spots that you're gonna get one of the masterpieces and there are 30 of them at the moment so that's one in every 60 pods that you're gonna get a sword so it's not gonna be that big but still it happens it, it happens and it's going to be um it's just going to make sure that that person wins but yeah and and then uh, but here, here's the thing for regular regular drafts it's okay but uh, Im imagine that pptq where you're in the top eight and the guy beside you just opens the sword and then you you just lose because of that sword that's gonna be frustrating for for some people right well that adds another uh, problem for wizards but um, more often than not I think this does address 
um, a lot of the issues that uh, challenges that they were mentioning that they wanted to correct and especially um, just even by the nature of this podcast um, you see how much excitement this is generating for uh, the magic community yeah you know what I should what, what I think they should do just to make it I mean limited wise they just should make them not limited playable I mean you can pick them for, for money but you, then you just don't play with them right because if you're a serious player, then you just don't pick them. You pick your bomb rare worth ten cents. Well, it's that's true, but then you're just gonna have packs, as you said, packs with a hundred dollars being stuffed in them. Or, or, or you know what they can do? They can do what they did with the with the treasures before, like the ones where you could open black lotuses and stuff, where they're part of the pack, but you don't have to pick them. They're like the token in the pack. So if you open a pack. You get to pick the rare and you get to keep the the black lotus. So if they do that with limited, then like you open a sword, you can you get the sword, you don't get to use it, but you keep it, right? And you get to pick your bomb rare or your. But then you lose you lose a rare for that pack because um, no, 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 it, do, it, do it, they it, say it, that it, this in in the in the treasures it took the comp the token slot? Yeah, for this one, um, which slot does the the does the masterpiece series take? It, it takes a common slot. I mean, I'm not sure, but that's what they did with um, Expeditions. Okay, then that's good. Um, if it takes up a common slot, then that's fine. Um, that might that might be a good fix. So, you know, Wizards? Yeah, I don't wizards think you're wiz- listen like, no, Wizards listening to us. But if they are, or if some some guy wants to, you know, point, this, point their, them to us, you know. Hey. You know, but Mark Rosewater, I mean, this makes sense. You have them occupy a comp, a token slot, so we don't and make them not um, limited playable. Do it. It's not an order, just a recommendation. Yeah, but yeah. anyway, thank you everybody for listening. Um, look forward to our regular podcast starting in a few days, um, and um, you know, look forward to these. Uh, and other news that we're bringing in for MTG and other uh, geek focused uh, games and um, topics and um, for uh, this is Elvin and for JR um, thank you for listening and watching so if you have um, any other questions about um, the masterpieces um, or what we talked about in the show and you couldn't find it online and just want to ask us um, just go ahead and comment that on the comment section and we will try to find out the answers for you also, if you have any other questions regarding the podcast or, or topics that you want us to talk about, yeah, just go ahead and leave a comment or, you know, message us on Facebook and we can, we can consider doing that. So click thumbs up if you liked, thumbs down if you didn't, but comment and let us know what you thought. So this is the uh, Red Zone post show, yeah. And um, we're just gonna be talking about things that um, not really that directly related to the topic that we had, uh, anecdotes, uh, things that happened to us, and things like that that might interest you guys. So something happened to me last week um, while we were playing slide dice. Uh, so one of the players, I'm not gonna mention names. Um, one of the male players uh, touched my foot with his foot and consequently um, I lost focus in that game and didn't win so uh, I want to f- I want to f- get your opinion uh, is is that cheating well if it's distracting I guess well, it, it also depends on what do you mean by cheating. I mean, is it like cheating like, um, hey, you're cheating, you should be disqualified from a, a tournament? Or do you mean like, hey, you're cheating? Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Um, So imagine you're in the Pro Tour. You're like, imagine you're in the Pro Tour. 
here in uh, the best of five tournament, but pro player. Um, two games apiece. Last game, shuffled, st- looking over your starting hand, then you suddenly feel, you know, a sock, like slowly touching your foot. You see, like your opponent just like looking at his cards nonchalantly, but then you feel it like slowly climbing up your leg. Like, what? What do you do? I, I guess you. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure that that level a uh, that's still physical contact, right? That physical contact is not allowed. Really? Because you know you shake hands at tournaments and all I, that. Well, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So you know, high five and all the, these other things, and you hand things over. But then you know, what do you need to do? You raise your hands and say, "Judge, judge, footsie." Yeah, I mean, because yes. Right? <laughs> judge, judge, stranger danger, stranger danger. But I mean, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess at that, that, that but, but I'm pretty sure at that level, it's gonna, be, it's gonna mean something bad. I mean, it's gonna mean like a disqualification level. But I'm more interested in what that means in like, um, like your F and M or, or your kitchen table where if this. Uh, uh, will, will the tournament or, or will the judge? What, the, like, how, how, how much do magic judges get trained? For possible harassment of phys- of a physical nature, as it relates to cheating. No, I guess I mean there should be guidelines where if you if if you if you feel harassed, maybe you should get a judge on the podcast one time. Well, ask we, them. we will get a judge. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll ask them like, it. hey, if somebody touches my leg, or if you're a judge listening to this, yeah, you can comment below and tell us like what your two cents about it is, because like it, say say. A girl, you know, uh, um, somebody touches me while I'm playing. That might disrupt me. So does that count? What if I'm just like really, really sensitive and somebody like looking at me, I can say, hey, judge, somebody's looking at me weird. That seems a little bit excessive, right? But what if that doesn't, that that hurts me playing? Like, what's the limits? What's the, what's the, what what's the board, uh, what's the boundaries of this? Because that was a little toe, toe touch, and that like caused me to lose focus for the rest of the game. Because I'm not a toe person. I'm not a foot person. I I, I don't like like touching feet. Ugh. But you know. So to our listeners or viewers, let us know what you think. It is it's art? It's foot seeing. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, well, no, uh, no, just okay. just like it's, what is the boundaries yeah. of like. Making sure that you're comfortable in the well, game. Well, no, but let's go with what what would would actually happen with with you and and that player. Do you think that's that's cheating? Yeah, tell, phys- tell is, is physical think. contact causing a distraction cheating? Okay, well, uh, with that, uh, we wish you ev- we wish everybody good night and uh, good luck. Mm-hmm.